I've often accused developers of being engineers with a hammer, considering that everything is a nail, basically just using one tool everywhere. But this could apply to my code on the Pico um, as well, and the way that I use C and C++ patterns. There are reasons why I choose certain patterns, and in this video, I thought we might explore the performance of the Pico running MicroPython as compared to C or C++. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Please remember to subscribe and join the community. MicroPython is by far the most common language used on the Pico. Of course, we can use other languages too, uh, the Pico has support for BASIC, FORTH, uh, there's some Rust and Go uh, options out there as well. MicroPython is an interpreted language though, and that has performance hits, which makes me avoid it in some use cases. In this video, I'm going to return to calculating the value of pi to a thousand significant figures. Let me see how we compare the performance of MicroPython and C and C++ for this workload. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year. I appreciate your help in getting me there and hope to see you there too. Please hit the like button and subscribe for more. So the concept for this video is gonna be really simple. All I'm going to do is compare the performance of the Pico um, to calculate the value of pi, either doing that in MicroPython or doing that in C and C++. This is a simplistic way of looking at performance um, and not entirely accurate, I must admit, but it gives us an idea of a workload and how these two things perform. This video is sponsored by Cancun. Cancun is a friendly retailer in the UK for modules, components and electrical equipment. Cancun has kindly offered a discount to my channel viewers on the first order. Just quote Dr John EA 20 at checkout to get a 20% discount. This excludes electrical test equipment and tools. If you're in the UK, go and check out Cancun today. I'm going to set up my Pico environment using Thonny and the MicroPython. And that's going to be a pretty standard uh, setup and there are lots of uh, tutorials on how to do that online. And then I'm going to use a function for streaming the value of pi, which is very common and uh, out there everywhere uh, on the internet of how to do this in Python. And this code will work perfectly well in MicroPython, which is great. Now, it may not be the most efficient code, I must admit, to run in MicroPython, um, but for the sake of this video, it's the code I'm going to use. And basically, I will just keep rerunning this code, um, and then every time I complete a calculation to a thousand decimal places, I can actually then just increment my counter that I've achieved that. And we'll see how many of those we can do in a minute. So we're going to calculate pi, to a thousand significant figures in one minute. And that's going to be our workload. I've got my code here in Fonny and I'm just gonna run that up and then I'll just cut the video because you don't wanna sit around here waiting for a minute. And we can see that the answer is we can calculate one value of pi to a thousand decimal places in a minute. That's kind of an anticlimax, isn't it? It takes the Pico in Python 38 seconds to run that algorithm to calculate pi to a thousand uh, significant figures. But of course we've got two cores on a Pico. Although I haven't actually done it, I do know that I can actually run this Python on both of the cores concurrently, and that means that I can calculate two values of pi in a minute. Great! So let's just review the results, which I think partially answer the question of why I don't often use MicroPython. So we've talked about um, running and calculating the value of pi on MicroPython on one core or two core. And previously I've done this running on bare metal, i.e. the Pico SDK in C and C++ on a single core or dual core. And I've also done that in FreeRTOS, a 
uh, framework that allows you to run multitasking across a single core or both cores of the Pico. So we know that uh, for MicroPython, for a single core, we get just a single calculation that we can complete within the minute. Or if we run on two cores, we could manage to calculate the value of pi twice in a minute. Well, how about in C++? Well, uh, running against the SDK on a single core, I can manage 184 uh, in a minute. And a dual core, 360. And free RTOS is about the same. Um, so you can see that there is massive difference between the performance we're getting out of MicroPython with these sorts of workloads and what I can actually achieve in C++. Now, we could optimize the Python, I must admit. I think I could make that go a bit quicker, but it's a couple of magnitudes out. So even if I manage to imp improve it, I am not gonna get it anywhere near what I'm achieving within C and C++. So is my conclusion that MicroPython is rubbish and we should not use it at all? No, of course it isn't. We just need to pick the right use cases. Um, Python is actually arguably easier to use than C and C++. You don't have to worry about the same memory management that we all worry about a lot in C and C++. And Python comes with a lots of really, really useful libraries. I think the iterative development time is actually faster in Python too. And therefore, you know, really the conclusion is pick your use case. If the use case really lends itself to Python, use Python. If it lends itself to the performance impact of C and C++, use C and C++. Um, I actually tried this out a little bit because one of the use cases I was interested in is doing an HTTPS request of a web service actually calling the Telegram service that you saw me call in previous uh, video in uh, C and C++. I tried calling that out and how that would be in Py MicroPython. And I used an example here from Ellie, um, who's got a brilliant example on uh, GitHub of how to do this in MicroPython. And it is incredibly simple, much simpler than trying to build this code in C and C++. So there are certainly use cases where I think MicroPython is a much, much easier um, option. So sometimes I think you can accuse me of being an engineer with a hammer, assuming everything is a nail. In hindsight, my Telegram project is a good example of that, where we could have done that much easier in MicroPython. Though there are things I could do in C and C++ version that I could never achieve in MicroPython. Why not check out my course on web services on the Raspberry Pi Pico in C and C++ on the Udemy platform to see some examples. If you'd like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video. Remember, I'm trying to save up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year. And I appreciate your help in getting me there. And I of course hope to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.